Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday morning to everyone. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning to join us with our ELL team from Multicultural, who are gonna share some awesome tech tools for all learners, not just ELL learners. Just like when we talked about in our ESE panel, the strategies you're gonna to learn today are not just for ELL learners, they really can work for every one of your students. So. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. It's great to see all of the, the great things in the chat already. Um, so we do appreciate that for sure. As a reminder, this is being streamed live on YouTube right now, and it will be recorded as well, and it'll be available on our channel, which is down below. You'll see our channel name. While you're looking down below, please feel free to click that subscribe button and uh, click the bell to get notified every time we go live. And of course, don't forget to like this video as well. All of that helps uh, push this video up to other people as well in uh, on YouTube to watch, uh, to learn uh, from us and what we're doing here in Palm Beach. So we're happy to offer this service from educational technology and bring in all the different groups that work in our office. As always, also all of our resources are posted on our website, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. So please, please, please feel free to visit that website and um, get access to all the different stuff that we've done already. We're up to 52 live streams that we've done since we've started remote learning. So there's a lot of content out there for you guys to look at and, um, and learn from um, anytime on demand. And also don't forget that there's a chat box, uh, nope, over there. And uh, that chat box is either right there on the right, or depending on how you have your YouTube video, it may be diagonal down there. So you may have to scroll to get to it, but then you just click in the box and then you can start chatting. So there's already a lot of great content going on in the chat, people introducing themselves. So please feel free to share who you are, what you do, where you're from. And uh, we also have people in the chat with little wrenches and those are our moderator minions. They are there to help answer questions because the stream's on about a 20 to 30 second delay, depending on how YouTube is feeling. So the presenters here are not really gonna be able to answer questions live until we get to the end. So we do have some moderators there in the chat who are there to answer questions or just help spur conversation to uh, keep things going and as, uh, as we get these tech tools shared with us. Um, and we also have a couple of mini, uh, moderators from Multicultural, so they are the ones who will be able to answer many of the questions, mostly because um, EdTech may not know the answers to those questions. So um, as I was saying, we have a great group of people here today. We have Noel, Amanda, and Allison, and they are from our Multicultural Department. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to turn it over to Noelle and she's going to enter, they're going to introduce themselves and they will get started. Take it away, ladies. Hi, good morning. We're so happy to be here and so happy to have you all join us this morning on this wonderful Friday morning. Um, as John said, I'm Noelle, Noelle Elvier. I work in the multicultural department and I am an ESOL instructional coordinator supporting South Region schools. Good morning. Um, my name is Amanda Leskis. I'm an ESOL instructional specialist um, serving the South region, primarily um, secondary schools. And hello, buenos dias. Good morning. My name is Allison Berrios de Gacharna, and I am an ESOL PD specialist, and I also serve some of the um, secondary schools in Central and South region. Thank you for having us. Okay, so Noelle, if you want to share your screen and we'll get started with your presentation. All right. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. We're so happy to have you. And I do want to take a quick moment to um, say happy Teacher Appreciation Week on this last day of um, Teacher Appreciation Week. We really owe you all the credit for all the hard work that you're doing, and we're so happy to share these strategies with you today. Um, we can only hope that you find at least one great trick to take back to your students in um, this time of distance learning. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the strategies we'll cover today 
are really ways to make text accessible to students. Um, and as John said, this is all students. It's not just our language learners. Um, it's any, any student who's learning. Um, so the strategies you see here are the five big ones that we'll be covering today. And we really wanna focus on incorporating all aspects of language, all of those domains of language, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and touching on receptive language and productive language. So the strategies that you see there with the stars next to them, those are what we'll cover today. And we'll make a point to um, note which domain that strategy really touches on when we're on those slides. So as you may be aware, a lot of the work, uh, professional development that we do in the multicultural department ties in with the go-to strategies. You see the cover of the booklet here um, and the link as well. These strategies are available online. They're also available on Blender. So throughout today's presentation, you will see the strategies listed here that will be incorporated um, throughout. And without further ado, I am going to, well, first I want to say um, there's several hyperlinks throughout the presentation. Uh, we may click in and out of some of them, um, but this entire presentation will be posted on EdTech's webpage. And so you'll be able to refer back to it later and see those links to videos that we've created um, and other helpful tools and documents that we don't necessarily have a chance to go through today. Um, I'll wrap back up at the end and um, talk about a few additional strategies, but I'm going to let Amanda take it away with our first strategy of chunking text. Good morning. Okay, so the first strategy we're going to look at today is chunking text. And we're really going to talk about how we can contextualize the language for our students so that they can better understand, understand the content. Um, a way that you can contextualize that language is by adding visuals, maps, graphs, illustrations, and really picking apart the text to hone in on specific concepts. There is a hyperlink to this particular slide that will take you to a video that shows you how to create an interactive lesson with a text, um, but I'm going to show you a few strategies on the following slides. The first one we're going to look at is building background knowledge. So. When you present text to your students and you are wanting them to read um, an article, a, some online text, it's really important that we build that background knowledge so that all students can go into the text with um, some prior understanding of the content. Here's an example slide that I want to show you. This um, slide was made to um, go with an article called Wildlife Warrior. The article is about wildlife conservation, but a huge part of the article talks about Steve Irwin and his family and his foundation. We need to provide this information to our students ahead of time so that they're familiar with the concept. So what we did is we created a slide, we inserted the image of Steve Irwin and then a short YouTube clip so that students could have that information prior to um, reading the article. Here's another example. The article that the students were reading discussed, um, talked quite a bit about this idea of a ripple effect, which is a pretty difficult concept. So what we did is we created a slide, added a definition for the students of that word, and then also um, inserted a GIF here so that students could have a visual representation of the word itself. Um, when we chunk text, what we want to do is we want to um, contextualize that language. And a great way to do that is through Google Slides. So you can actually take a specific part of a text and add it into a single slide so that it's a short digestible bite. And then you can embed specific scaffolding into that slide. I'm going to show you an example here with this article. So this article, it's a sixth grade, it's at a sixth grade reading level, and it was several pages long. And if I were to push out this article to the students on its own, I'm not quite sure in a digital um, environment that my students are going to be able to understand the whole thing. In fact, um, at a middle school level, I my students, they might just open this up and glance at it and hit turn in and not even really read it. Um, or they might even take the entire text, 
copy it and paste it into a translator and translate it all. And what I really want is I want them to be able to understand and comprehend it on their own. I really want that comprehensible input for my students. So what I can do here is I'm gonna take this first paragraph. Um, you can see it here on the screen and I screenshot it into a slide on its own. I'm gonna put just that paragraph on the slide. And then from there, I can add pictures and images and even some annotated notes so that they can better understand the concept. You can see on this particular article, it's really nicely chunked. So all I would have to do is just take screenshots of the paragraphs that I want my students to understand and insert them into individual slides. If you have online text or a newspaper article, it might not be as easily um, chunked for you. So you'll have to do that on your own. And what I tell teachers is to really think about if you are in the classroom, where would you naturally break? Where would you stop to ask clarifying questions or stop to um, clarify a concept? Or where does, where does it change from one character to another? Those are the areas that you might wanna chunk your text. There might also be parts of your text that you might skip over in a classroom. So you don't necessarily have to include everything in a lesson. And feel free to know that this type of article might take several days to complete. And that's okay. This particular article itself was a couple pages and it was split up into three separate lessons for the students. But after those three lessons, those students really comprehend their, the content and they're able to ask questions and have conversations about the article itself. I'm gonna show you a couple more examples of how you can add one paragraph or section at a time. So here um, is a paragraph and then a diagram was inserted to clarify that concept a little better. And here's another one where the students were asked to think aloud on some rhetorical questions. You can see we created the think aloud for them in a digital manner so that they can really think through how they might answer those questions. If I were to use this yellow slide um, with my class, the following day in a live session, if I ask this question, my students are gonna be much better prepared to engage in that conversation. Just wanna quickly show you that in order to add that um, image and video from Google Slides, you can go to the insert menu right from your toolbar. You can insert an image directly from the web right on your page, and you can insert a video as well right on YouTube. What's great about this is you can insert the video right onto your slide and your students can watch the video within the slideshow. They don't have to go to a separate web page. It's right embedded within the lesson itself. There's also some links on this slide that we think offer great images and clip art for you to check out. Um, and now we're gonna hear uh, strategy number two with Allison, which is building background, now building vocabulary. All right, so building vocabulary. We know how important it is for our students to develop not only the social, but the academic language. So one of the strategies that I love the most to use from GoTo Strategies is the closed sort task and also the open sort task. And the reason why I like them so much is because our students interact with this strategy as in a, they will interact with a game um, they see it as a game the whole time, by the way. Um, but how important it is to increase not only the academic language um, for our students by using the strategy, but also interacting in a virtual way with them um, because we don't have the partners that they can work with. So we're going to give you some ideas on how this can become live. Um, so uh, in this slide, we have a couple of examples of actually um jamboard as you know jamboard is a interactive whiteboard that was developed by google and how opportune now to use it during this times with our students and um the examples here are actually examples that um of jamboards that our uh, multicultural team members have um, actually created and um we're gonna look at one in a, in a minute but um, you can use this for many purposes and they can be used in a variety of content areas. Um, what we love the most is that actually in our department, we even had a baby gender game with this <laughs> interactive tool. So it can 
serve not only the students, but also the adults. Um, so I'm going to click on this one. This is the vocabulary sample for those newly arrived ELLs. I'm going to click on it, and hopefully you will see it pop. Um, all right. It's taking a few minutes. So remember that article that Amanda was talking about, about um, Steve, uh, Steve Irwin and his family? Well, here's a way to interact with that vocabulary coming from that article. And so students now will have the two categories and they're going to try to place not only the words, but also the pictures that relate to those words. Um, this is great to actually have your students work on it individually as you push it through the Google Classrooms. You're going to be able to um, give them an opportunity to interact with this strategy on their own. But if you want to see immediate feedback coming from your students, you can actually have your students all at once in this uh, Jamboard interacting with you, and then you will have that immediate feedback coming from them. OK, so let's go back to our presentation. Um, yep, OK, so here we are. So please check out the other examples. And I know Amanda also um, created this tutorial video that you can actually go back and, and see how to create your own. It is really useful. And it's also later on, Noelle is going to show you where else you can find this tutorial. All right. So um, going next, there's our other ways that you can build vocabulary. Notice that this is a pre-reading vocabulary activity that was done um, through Google Doc. And um, this is prior to reading a text. You prepare the pre-reading vocabulary activity with key terms. We have two columns in here. Our students can not only worry about the definition, but they can also, um, as, as an opportunity for them to bring their home language and interact with it, we have a column for translation. So our students can go back to their home language and just write the word that they feel familiarized with when looking at the word in English. And then another way that you can help your students is just by annotating the text, by pointing out and explaining those key vocabularies and concepts to aid their comprehension. Um, and so there are so many ways to do it. And um, these are just a couple to, to mention for you. All right, and then we come to one of those extensions pro, uh, from Google Chrome that I love a lot. And this one is the read and write extension that I know that some of you are familiarized with. If you're not, um, we also have tutorials on how to um, make this available on your Google Chrome pages. But this tool, it's amazing. It not only allows the um, teachers and students to go to a PDF or to go to a um, live way, um, a web link and have the students um, listen to the reading of that text for them. But also, there is a magnificent part of this tool that actually allows teachers to create vocabulary lists from the text and it makes a uh, word document of those words like this you will think that we work really hard on doing this but no it was done automatically it's amazing it shows the word it actually gives you the meanings of the word and it gives you a symbol and also a column for notes where um, again, you can allow your students to do translation connections, or they can write their own sentences using the words. And um, Noelle, actually, later on, is, if we have a couple of minutes, she's going to show you how to actually produce this live. But there's also, a, just in case if we don't have time, there's a video on how to do it as well linked to this page. And um, she's going to explain to you how to do it. but. Keep in mind, though, that when um, the Google Doc produces the list, it's going to give you different meanings. So you have to go back to the context and make sure that those words correlate to the reading that you have with your students in the context that they're using. And then um, 
one of the last things that I want to show you is that um, smart interactive games that we're all familiarized with. We have, again, the super swords, the, uh, the matchup games. We have the whole feel of this is a graphic organizer, but it's interactive and students can definitely go back and interact in a fun way. You can check out the smart resource page for more ideas. And I know that our team in EdTech has produced so many uh, tutorials on how to interact with this tool as well. And so now I want to um, give the opportunity to Noel to talk about supporting native language. All right. Thanks, Allison. So our next strategy is supporting native language. And you see here we have Cognates, which is referenced on our go-to strategies. Um, a little bit about Cognates in case you aren't aware. These are words that look and sound similar in other languages um, to words that we use in English. And the really interesting fact is 30 to 40 percent of our English words are actually cognates in one of the Romance languages. So it's really interesting to share this with students because once they become familiar with them, they can start identifying the words on their own in texts that they're reading. So this supporting native language is really going to tie in with our receptive language and that of reading and listening. So some ways that we can add native language supports, we've shared uh, pretty much with all of our schools these glossaries, their content glossaries for um, English language learners and multi-language learners. Um, NYU created these and they started using them in New York, but we have um, encouraged schools to use them here with our language learners um, in testing, in class, um, in class assessments, you name it. Um, they are PDFs and that hyperlink that you see at the top will take you directly to the website and you can share um, these within your Google Classrooms. They are divided by content area and um, level, elementary, middle, and high school. So those are really exciting tools that you can share with your students if you haven't seen them already. And then we have these two extensions, Google um, Translate and I Am Translator, which are extensions that you can add to your Chrome browser. Um, these are great features to have if you wanted to translate um, some pieces of text or some words and phrases so that you can um, connect with your students and help make the uh, lessons that you're teaching more relevant to them. Um, and they can connect with those words that they may not understand in English, but they'll understand in their home language. So those links will take you directly to add that extension on your browser if you have not already. And then the last one on this slide is the Cognate Writer, which you see in the bottom right of your, uh, the bottom left of your screen is what the Cognate Writer looks like. Um, and this here, you would have a PDF of a text that you're um, working on with your students. You can copy and paste that um, text right into that white box. And over on the right side of your screen, you see what that looks like. So this piece of text on the slide, on uh, the left side of the slide is the actual piece of text. You'll notice that bold faced word, which is the vocabulary word in the text. And then the white box with the blue um, letters, the blue words, on the right is actually taken from the cognate writer. So those blue words are cognates. And what that means is those words are familiar to your students who speak Spanish, Portuguese, French, German, because they look and sound similar to their language. And so the interesting thing here is the word utilized is also a cognate. And so while it's a vocabulary word that we want to make sure that we touch on for our students, um, it might already be a familiar term to them. So once they become familiar with identifying these cognates, then we can focus more on the words that aren't cognates to make sure that we make the content comprehensible. And then uh, this next slide to support native language, we have BrainPop and BrainPop Junior. And one of the great things that we've learned about in this time of distance learning is that they've recently added BrainPop ELL and Espanol and Francais. 
we created a document here to help you connect to those uh, resources. Now, what I will say is you only see Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior in your um, portal. And once you get to one of those platforms, you will have to click Mobi in the drop down menu to access the Brain Pop ELL or the other um, resources for your students or encourage them to access them that way. But the document that you see posted um, is a helpful guide to get you there if you haven't already found it yourself. And then um, Gale Research, this is another hidden gem. Um, we recently made a video to show you some of the features of Gale Research and that's linked here on the slide, but in case you aren't familiar already, uh, you can search up any topic in Gale Research and there are tons of accessibility features uh, already embedded within. Um, you can translate the article in a number of languages and students can also listen to the article. Um, and that listen feature even works when the text is translated. So that's amazing. Um, on many of the documents, you can adjust the Lexile level. level. That's another great feature. And um, for some of our students with disabilities, they may need increased font size. And that is another feature that's available as well. You'll see the link here to the video overview, um, which shares exactly how you can access this tool and check out some of the features that are there. And next, I'm going to bring it back to Amanda with some great ways to scaffold student responses. Um, so we've spent so far this morning strategies one through three talking about that input, the receptive language when we give students reading and listening tasks. And now we want to change to looking at the output, um, the productive language that we're asking our students to do in speaking and writing. And particularly in this digital environment, students don't have the support of looking at what their neighbor's doing or asking a friend or having a CLF come over and help or the teacher. Um, so we need to provide some scaffold supports for them so that they can be successful in speaking and writing. There's a couple strategies outlined in the go-to strategies handbook, key sentence frames and word and picture bank. Um, and those are great ways to structure the language for the students um, and provide them the vocabulary they need to be successful. I'm gonna show you a few examples. So the first one is using sentence stems and frames. And really the difference between a stem and a frame is just that a sentence stem starts out the sentence um, and the students fill in the blank, where a frame is a little bit more whole language. Um, it's an entire sentence or a paragraph where students fill in at different parts um, within that sentence. Here's some examples of some stems. Students were reading a newspaper article and writing their thoughts. Um, on the article thus far. So you can see in the pink box there, there's some stems for the students to fill in the blank with um, what they're thinking. And then here's another example, back to the, um, the ripple effect article. There's a quote here on kindness and students are asked to look at the quote and then explain it in their own words. Um, you can see down in the bottom in orange, there's some stems and some frames for them to help guide their thinking. And really, you know, I tell students they don't have to use these stems and frames, but they can use them as an example to guide them. You'll find that if you use these types of stems um, and frames with your students, their writing is going to be much richer. And it really supports our ESOL students, but it supports all students. We all sometimes need a little kickstart in, um, in our thinking. And this, these types of examples really help um, produce that language for students. You could also easily take this slide and use it in a live session. You could take the explain the quote and share your screen and have a conversation with your students. And I think with this, um, you would see with these sentence frames examples, you're gonna get a much richer discussion. Okay, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat, sorry. So we're gonna take a look at um, some word banks here. You are going to notice this slide. There is a word bank in blue here. And the question is asking the students about what the experience would be to live in a state with cold weather. 
There's a lot of different vocabulary in this bank. You'll see some of it is tier one vocabulary and some of it is tier two, tier three vocabulary. If your students have access to a word bank, um, they're gonna be able to pick and choose words that they feel familiar with and everybody will be able to participate. You could do this word bank live. You could include this in a live session in your conversation, or you could have it um, as part of an assignment to aid the students in their writing. The thing I love best about word banks is it pairs perfectly with the sentence frames. Here you can see there's a paragraph frame here written um, to help students create a summary on the main point of an article. On the side there is a word bank for students to fill in with the vocabulary words that they think work best um, in the paragraph itself. What's neat about this in a Google slide is that you could actually create each word as its own text box, and then it can be interactive where students can slide the word over into the slide um, to finish up the paragraph. And really this type, these word banks, they really support our students. Um, they provide key vocabulary and concepts. And I always tell teachers, you're in charge of your own word bank. So if there's words you wanna make sure your students are exposed to and that they're using, put it in your word bank, right? Um, here's some digital tools to do some word banks and sentence frames. The Smart Learning Suite has a great activity called Fill in the Blanks. Super easy. All you do is type up a sentence and then um, highlight the words that you would like to go in the bank and it'll create it for you. You can then assign it out to your students for them to work on. And then we have an example of Jamboard. I know Allison talked about Jamboard already, but this example shows a um, word bank and an image and then a some sentence frames that they could fill in on their own. Um, and now we're going to talk with Allison about modeling academic language. All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? Just kidding. All right, so modeling academic language is so important not only to promote that academic vocabulary and um, support our students with that grammar structures that all the time they have in their minds, right? They're learning a second language and think about all the, the nervousness that you feel, the um, insecurities that your students may actually be experiencing because they don't know, am I pronouncing this correctly? Am I saying it correctly? Is my grammar okay? Will people understand me? So when you model academic language, you bring that, um, you factor out that law, uh, the low pressure that they feel about interacting with others. So one of the strategies that we like to promote a lot in, in everything that we do in our PDs is that choral reading. It provides that model for fluent reading, what it also um, promotes those effective reading strategies that you want your students to, to do. And um, it allows that language learner to have that opportunity to practice, like I said, in a low pressure environment. And um, so we're gonna show you a couple of things that you can do. So choral reading in the digital world, how interesting that is. Well, um, I know that most of us have been uh, dealing with the Google Meet and um, here we have some um, adult readers as an example, but um, we, we see actually a little chunk of text, like Amanda was talking about how crucial it is to chunk text. Uh, for choral reading, it's extremely important. So we have just a chunk of the text right now, and it talks about DNA. Now think about the higher order thinking that is going on with this topic. And we have questions that we can ask out loud to, um, to actually answer and model how to answer to our students. But what you can do as well is you can bring that little snippet of the text and um, now using a Google slide, you will animate it to bring a live reader. Um, so this is really simple to do. It's just like a square and then you animate it to come from left to right, whatever you want, and then students will read one line at a time. Now, how important it is not only to use this 
strategy with your English language learners, but also with your students that need that additional reading um, experience, right? Those strategies for our students that, um, you know, reading is, is one of the areas where they have the most challenges with. And so this is a great way to allow your students to practice academic language orally. We want to focus on uh, developing language not only in the language domains of reading and writing and listening, but also orally. All right. So another way that you can do this, again, is that read and write for Google Chrome. And um, you know that... Um, when you have your students listen to and, and read, they can actually record themselves. And now I know that this works perfectly fine when they have a live uh, link to a, um, a website. Now, if you download a, re a, a reading uh, text, coming from a website like ReadWorks, News ELA, a couple of websites that we're very much familiarized with and they create a PDF document. Um, students are not gonna be able to record themselves reading that, but they will be able to read it um, with this extension. And um, again, they you can create those word lists, those vocabulary word lists that um, Noel hopefully will give you a quick uh, explanation on how to do it. But how important it is to actually have your students listen to the proper pronunciation of how to read a, um, a, a text in English and then practice on their own. This is, you know, one of the things that I am so grateful that um, Google is always thinking about how to enhance the learning. And in this times that we're doing this digital learning, this has become really a uh, very useful tool. And so I, we have come to the end of this, but now we have, we're going to have Noel wrap it up for us. So Noel, take it away. All right. So um, what I'm going to share with you here is um, just very quickly, I want to go over this read and write extension. I think it's an excellent feature um, that we've recently discovered. And I'm going to show you really quickly how uh, you can find a piece of text either um, online on a website or here. I have one um, that I've saved as a PDF and I've um, put it into my Google Drive. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that vocabulary list that Allison spoke about earlier um, straight from this PDF document that's been saved in my Google Drive. Um, and remember, if I go a little bit too fast, there is a video linked in the slides and you can um, easily refer back to it later. So the really important thing here when you're opening this document is that you open with your read write um, for Google Chrome. So that's going to open it into a new window. And you'll see the read write toolbar appear right at the top. Now, I've already worked on this piece of text, so you see that the vocabulary I wanted to highlight is already highlighted. Um, so I won't have to go through and do that, but you can see um, those words that I've highlighted already. And it's really simple. Um, it's really uh, literally a click of a button. So I've highlighted the text, and I'm going to go over here and click this vocabulary. And I will, um, it's going to produce a vocabulary list right in my Google Drive. No work on my end, other than how Allison mentioned, um, really making sure that the vocabulary that's in here, the descriptions, the meanings, tie into the context that you're reading about. So um, that brings me down here to this word spawn. Um, and this example uh, didn't do exactly what it did in the web version, but the definition that it provides is not really, it doesn't go with the context of tornadoes. Um, so I would need to make sure that I take that one out. Um, in the web version, there was another uh, little description there that matched with the text about tornadoes. So I made sure to leave that one in. Um, but for some reason from the Google, the PDF in my Google Drive, it didn't actually um, do it the same. But 
The really interesting feature or neat feature when you do it from a Google document, a PDF in your Google Drive is students can link right back to the piece of text here um, because it puts a link right at the bottom of the vocabulary list. So I just think that's amazing. Um, I'm not going to talk about the um, recording feature, uh, but that is in the video also. And so that brings me just to recap quickly. Um, again, these are the strategies that we covered during the slides that were presented today, and they do come from the go-to strategies document, which is available on Blender, and it's also linked here on this slide. Um, and then a couple extra tools I wanted to talk about um, is Nearpod. Nearpod is an excellent resource for teachers to um, put their presentations into slides and then chunk them apart with questions, polls, activities, um, competitive games that the kids can participate in. Um, and then Kahoot, of course, more healthy competition for your classroom. Um, Flipgrid is another wonderful tool that allows students to record themselves. I think this is great for SEL, um, you know, posing a question about how students are feeling or just a reflection of, of how their weekend was, um, a reflection about text, and then students can record themselves and share it with their teacher. Um, and then Edpuzzle. Um, Edpuzzle is a tool where you take YouTube videos and you embed stopping points that um, allow the content to be chunked and uh, pose questions to students. There can be open-ended responses, multiple choice. So it really breaks apart a YouTube presentation um, in shorter digestible bites with questions embedded throughout. So those are some great tools that you can check out. And then I'll just wrap it up with a few more things from our department. So we have uh, Blender pages for elementary and secondary. They're both linked here on the slide. We uh, pack them full of all types of resources and they are updated frequently. And then the slide that you see on the right side is a website that was developed right when we left for distance learning. And this is jam packed with all types of resources. I update it quite regularly, um, blogs, uh, digital tools, uh, just endless resources, links to um, our YouTube channel, which I'll talk about in a second. So check that out if you haven't already. And then um, our, we have an ESOL Google Classroom. The class code is there. If you haven't joined, uh, we have some awesome team members uh, that support our professional development and they are constantly updating this with resources and ideas and suggestions. So if you haven't joined that classroom, I encourage you to do that. And then, as I mentioned, our multicultural YouTube channel, we have tons of videos here to share with parents, students, you all, uh, teachers to support the work, the great work that you're doing out there. Um, so check that out. And then that wraps it up for us. And um, we just want to take a minute to thank you. We are so happy that you came out on this Friday morning to join us for our presentation. And um, we're happy to have you. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much, ladies. That was really, really, really great. And I saw some awesome information in the chat. Um, lots of great conversation in the chat box as well. So thank you. If anyone still has questions, please feel free to ask them while we review just a couple more things um, from our department in ed tech here. Uh, but we do appreciate you joining us for sure. Um, it was really great ideas to share with, uh, with all teachers, like we said. Um, so real quick though, before we, uh, before we end here, I just wanted to share a couple of things. First of all, obviously it's already um, <clears throat> uh, 8 a.m. So you've sat through this session here this morning. Um, the, the multicultural group also mentioned uh, Smart Learning Suite multiple times, SLSO. Um, we actually have our smart group coming up at 1130 to share how to gamify your presentation. So you do not want to miss that. Um, the link to join that one's on our website, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. On Monday, we have three awesome streams. We have uh, Microsoft Sway, which is a really cool application. Um, our friend Tanya is going to come back and share some more remote learning with Spark. 
And then John Long and a couple of others are going to be doing code.org and how you can be doing that from home. I'm also extremely happy to announce that we are going to be hosting a remote digital learning institute June 9th and 10th in EdTech. It's literally going to be two days of just like we're doing right now, where we're going to have a, a new presentation every hour. And we have all these awesome ed tech people coming around from, from around the world joining us. So um, you can either scan the QR code, take a screenshot, or uh, you could use the bit.ly, which is bit.ly slash remote institute with capital R, capital I, to register. And uh, if you do go, you could earn up to 10 in-service points both days, so up to 20 points for attending remotely. Um, so you do not want to miss that at all. So um, also, starting May 18th, we're going to be starting to do our digital uh, remote uh we're calling them virtual learning experiences. Sorry about that, forgot about the words. Virtual learning experiences where we're gonna have virtual field trips and we're also going to be having um, uh, interesting careers. So we're gonna actually bring in some cool careers like DJs and um, we're hopefully gonna get a cool car expert. We have someone from Google gonna be doing one. And all of those are gonna be designed directly for your students. So we want teachers to actually share the links to these streams with their students in the live stream, uh, in the Google Classroom, so the kids can join just like you joined today. Your students will be able to watch and learn from these awesome people. So that's the whole last two weeks of school. We have an awesome schedule planned, um, and more information will be going live on our website very soon. Also, as always, if you need some support, our happy uh, uh, more minions are available to support you. Um, it's so much easier by filling out this form instead of emailing us because you're going to get an answer almost immediately because the entire smart group will be uh, is monitoring that form as well. So there's like 20 people getting that form all at once. And so you'll get an answer much faster if you fill out the form. So please feel free to use that form. Um, just so everyone also knows, I saw in the chat box, um, this is recorded as we mentioned, it's the same exact link at the top. So whatever, however you got here, it's the same link that will show the recording. As soon as we end, the recording is available, but it could take up to 24 hours for the chat replay to appear. So, um, once YouTube processes the video, the chat box will be there as well. So you can see all the awesome ideas that were shared throughout the chat as well. So I didn't see any more questions. So with that, ladies, I'm going to give you guys the floor to um, to share some any last words before we end the stream. I'll start with Noel. Well, we just, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to always share great strategies with everyone out there in the district. It's you all that are doing the hard work, and uh, we want nothing more than to support you in all of your efforts. So thanks for being with us. Thanks again, you guys, for being here this morning. We know it's early and it's Friday morning. We appreciate all you're doing. Um, we, again, like Noelle said, we're here to support you and help you in making your content as comprehensible as possible for your students. Please reach out to us at any time. We're all in this together. Thanks so much. It is an honor to work along your side and support you in the best of our uh, capacity. We love working and being here today. So have a great weekend. Woohoo! It's Friday. <laughs>